Next game on our list, it's the Arizona Cardinals traveling to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. This is a, a matchup between two teams that have pretty good offenses, uh, pretty good defenses as, as of late as well. Uh, the Cardinals enter this game three and four. The Vikings at five and one looking good coming out of their bye. Uh, Aaron, what do you... What do you make of this this Vikings team right now with at five and one coming out of the bye? What what do we expect to see from them the rest of the season and in this game in particular uh, against the Cardinals? Well, I expect to see good offense um, because that's what they've always been is is a good offensive football team. Uh, Dalvin Cook get a week to rest that shoulder up. Jay Jett is obviously a top receiver in the league. Uh, Kirk Cousins is going to be Kirk Cousins. He'll play well unless it's a primetime game and then he won't. Um, so they have they have the weapons on offense to be a good offense. The question mark will always remain until they prove it is consistency on the defensive side of the football. Can you be consistent? And I think that's what we're asking each and every week. We're we're seeing, hey, can this team stop people on third down? Can this team create turnovers to get off the field? And we've seen some of that in in opportunistic uh, times this year, late in that game against um, in London against the Saints. We saw it against the Bears. Like I think that. This is a team that has the capability of doing it. They are young at some certain pieces, uh, but they got to continue to grow. So Darius Smith is big for them, getting him from Green Bay and his ability to rush the passer. Patrick Peterson being a veteran on that back end. They have to continue to progress defensively and hope that at the end of the season, they're in a situation where they can say, okay, our defense is adequate enough to make a playoff run because we know what we're going to get from the offensive side of the football. And I think that, I think it continues. I think they're going to continue to win games. And when they play a matchup, against the powerhouses is when they get exposed usually. And that was Philly, right? That was uh, against Philly this year, maybe against another team we'll, we'll see, but um, I don't know what their schedule actually looks like when they play those tough opponents, but that's really where I'm gauging Minnesota as, as at those, at that point in time. For the Cardinals on the other side, AJ, they are coming off of a 42 34 win over the saints last week on Thursday night football. They've had a little bit of extra rest as well. And it was really the same old, same old from Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins, 10 receptions, 103 yards uh, last week in his season debut. Uh, is this is this offense, is the key to this offense as simple as DeAndre Hopkins just has to be in the lineup, or is there more to it? I, I mean, I, I really think it is. Uh, he's a uh, number one receiver who's proven himself in this league. Even in a down year, he was still giving defensive fits. He couldn't score a lot of yards, didn't get a lot of receptions. That's cool. He put up eight touchdowns in, in seemingly no time. You look at last week, his first week back, the excitement they had with this man, 48% of the target share last week. That's astronomical. Leads the league in one on one uh, game this season. Um, and now you get to do that against a Vikings team, which a lot of us are waiting to see the shoe drop. And this could easily be the week that it happens. A lot of people are expecting the five and one Vikings to go in there and take care of the Cardinals who can't score first quarter touchdown, who keeps losing in close games. Um, I don't know if that's the case. I mean, you look at what uh, the Vikings are. They're 31st against the pass and 31st against number one wide receivers. And when you look at a DeAndre Hopkins, it may not be as easy as 48% of the target share, but it's going to be enough where they're going to have some problems. And now Robbie Anderson, who obviously we can't speak so much about our Robbie Anderson, but uh, you know, another week in a new offense and an offense that wants to, to uh, spread the ball out and air the ball out. Uh, you, you replace that deep threat of Marquise Brown for a couple of weeks. Maybe he gets going a little bit and Connor can use these weapons. So um, I do think putting in a DeAndre Hopkins makes this offense look a little bit, a lot different, actually. It allows Kyler Murray to feel a little bit more comfortable. He, I honestly think he felt more comfortable than he ever has this season now that DeAndre Hopkins is back. Just look at the way he went at Cliff Kingsbury. <laughs> uh, so to me, that's how easy it is uh, with the DeAndre Hopkins back in the lineup. Oh, my, my guy, AJ. I, I disagree. I disagree. I don't think there was that much of a difference. Um, I do want to. I do want to say that DeAndre Hopkins looked good, and Kyler Murray throwing to DeAndre Hopkins looked good. But Kyler Murray throwing to Hollywood Brown looked good, and Hollywood Brown had led the NFL in target share percentage before he got hurt. I think the offense looked exactly the same. Kyler Murray still ended up only throwing for 200 yards. We look at the big scoring numbers, and we thought that was their offense, but no, it was their defense. They created four turnovers in the game. Three of them put them in the red zone. Um, in that game, Andy Dalton threw two pick sixes right before the half, which allowed that momentum to go. But if you look at that game and watch Kyler Murray play, he was still 20 of 29, didn't look that great, was sacked twice. He had, he, he again, had threw the one touchdown, but it wasn't like they were out there airing the ball around. It was just DeAndre Hopkins. It was 10 catches, 100 yards. 
I didn't think the offense looked good at all, um, from a, especially from a passing perspective, which is what we were kind of thinking DeAndre Hopkins would do. I thought they missed Hollywood Brown significantly. Rondell Moore hasn't really produced the way he's supposed to be producing. I have serious concerns for the Arizona Cardinals offense because I've seen this before. I've seen, oh, drop back and just throw it to DeAndre Hopkins. That's great. But if you don't have anything else that's going for you, I think you're going to run into some problems. And maybe it might not be this week against Minnesota because Minnesota's defense is an elite. But you look at the rest of that offensive game plan, and it really didn't look any different than the first few weeks of the season. They just put up more points because their defense helped them out. I guess I guess, kind of in a way, and it's unfair to have done it this way, I'm thinking about it with a Hollywood Brown in the mix. Uh, they they really missed having a second receiver. I mean, the timing couldn't have been worse for them to get DeAndre Hopkins back and the guy he traded for goes down. You know, if Robbie Anderson had been there a week sooner, maybe they get to utilize him too because when Robbie Anderson has a guy willing to throw the ball, he can he can he can be something special. And I, I, I think I, I think I think he will. I mean, I mean, poor guys had Sam Darnold. Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield, <laughs> you know, now he gets a talented receiver and, uh, and I think that can change some things for him. Um, so, and I agree. I, I wasn't thinking about the points because it was the defense last, uh, last week with the, against the saints. And, and I, I am aware of that, but I believe the confidence level, the, the connection and the chemistry that a DeAndre Hopkins has with the Kyler Murray, uh, it just, it just feels different. And it feels like the trending is going to head in the right direction. I can't speak exactly to what I think Robbie Anderson is going to be this week. Uh, I just think he has the potential to be better now that he has, I guess, another fresh start, one that he basically chose. Maybe not the (laughs) – maybe I got got vertigo, bro. Maybe not the destination, but the fact that he's no longer uh, with Carolina. That may be enough to just get him enjoying football again. Uh, Vinny, Vinny, and, and Vinny's over there screwing up. He's on mute. He's yeah, over there trying to talk. Yeah. He's on, well, he's I'm, happy, on, I'm happy I was on mute because I didn't want to throw off AJ on on his on on the ending of his statement. And I also <laughs> didn't have B-roll or a graphic to cover my transition like I normally do. So uh, <laughs> I, I just th- I just think that I just think that this is more Cliff Cliff Kingsbury. <laughs> yeah, Cliff Kingsbury. Kingsbury. Cliff Kingsbury. Kingsbury. Issues. Yeah, I just think it's a Cliff Kingsbury <laughs> issue because. <laughs> um, that's why it hasn't looked very good. That's why. I mean, it's not just the, it's not the personnel to me. Like I do think I think Rondell right. Moore is talented. I think DeAndre Hopkins is great. Eno Benjamin and them can get, but it just doesn't look explosive like we thought it was going to be under Cliff Kingsbury. And I think that's that's his issue. He needs to figure out a way, regardless of who's out there in wideout. I oh, am. I'm going to start. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, you've been, you've been picking first, and I, and AJ, you've also been picking first too. I, I was going to my throw in my pick to try and throw. Yeah, um, I have the Vikings in this game, 33 <laughs> 31. Uh, I think it's a high scoring game. I don't think both defense, I, I think both defenses are, are kind of who they are. I don't think that they're that phenomenal. I get the, the turnovers that the Cardinals had last week with Andy Dalton at quarterback. Uh, I'm not sure that Kirk Cousins turns the ball over that much in this game, in, in this game specifically. Um, and I think it's a little bit of a high scoring matchup. 33, 31 Minnesota Vikings, Aaron, who you got? Yeah, I have Minnesota in this one as well. I have Minnesota winning 35 to 28. Uh, again, high scoring game. I think both offenses will be okay in this one. DeAndre Hopkins should have a good day. Um, I'm hoping that Arizona's offense shows up, um, but I think Minnesota is the better football team overall. And I think they get the win here at home. All right. If I'm not mistaken, this is our first not clean sweep. Uh, I am going with the Cardinals in this game. I think they get back to back W's. I think they start uh, putting some things together, maybe low, low scoring, thinking about the Vikings and all their offensive power, only putting up 24 points. Uh, but who knows? This defense is not just last week, uh, but has started doing some things correctly. They have been getting pressure on the quarterback a little bit more, and that might come into effect. So uh, I'm, I'm going to stick with the score, 27-24, and uh, see if the Cardinals can pull one out. It uh, is our second not clean sweep. Uh, I, we all had different uh, answers for Carolina and Atlanta. Um, uh, oh, yeah, he picked yeah. Carolina because he's not going to be there. That's right. Yeah, That's right. yeah, <laughs> something along something along those lines. Uh, but two for Minnesota, one for Arizona in this game. Uh, if the Vikings do win, they would move to six and one, and what a start that would be uh, for a Vikings team coming back with a new head coach this year. Uh, it would be a great start uh, for the Vikings. 